There are many theories that try to explain how the Earth came to be and evolved into the Earth that we know now. If we believe these theories and compare the structure of the Earth before and now, we may be surprised at the major changes the Earth has undergone. This lesson will explain the forces that have changed and are continuing to change the Earth. Aside from the natural forces that shape the Earth every day, there are other natural processes that can change the Earth's crust. These are the natural disasters like earthquake, tsunamis, typhoon, and volcanic eruptions. These forces may create drastic and rapid changes to the Earth. Earthquakes The Earth's surface is lying on a large mass of land called plates that are constantly moving. These plates are on the top of liquid mantle that allows the movement. Because of the tremendous pressure along the plates, they bend, break, and fold, forming cracks that are called fault lines. As the rocks underneath move, the crust on the top of it shakes and vibrates, and this would be felt along the fault lines. This shaking of the ground is called an earthquake. Earthquakes happen frequently, but most of them are barely noticeable. About 500,000 earthquakes happen in a year all over the world, but only about one-fifth of them, or 100,000, are felt. Once in a while, a movement could trigger a very strong earthquake on the surface. These earthquakes could be very damaging to anything that lies in its path. Earthquakes may also be caused by volcanic eruptions, and are associated with the formation of tsunamis. Strength of an earthquake The point of an origin of an earthquake is called the focus. The part on the surface of the earth lying on the top of the focus is called the epicenter. This is where the most damages occur. The effects of the earthquake are lesser as you go farther from the epicenter. The amount of energy released during an earthquake is called the magnitude. Magnitudes can be measured using the Richter scale. Volcanic eruptions A volcano is a vent or a hole on the Earth's crust that may extend deep into the crust or even after the mantle layer. Intense heat underneath the vents causes rocks to melt and form the magma. The high pressure of the temperature in the mantle sometimes forces the magma to the surface. This causes the explosion we call volcanic eruptions. The Philippines belong to the area called the Pacific Ring of Fire, a chain of volcanoes around the Pacific Ocean. About 452 volcanoes are found within this area. Some of these volcanoes, like Mount Pinatubo, are found on land while others are found in the bodies of water. There are about 5,000 volcanoes that are underwater. Volcanic eruptions may be explosive. They release gas, ash, molten rocks called lava, big rocks that are dangerous to the surrounding environment. They could kill plants and animals living in the area. When a very hot lava flows out to the surrounding of the environment, this would damage anything in its path, including homes, buildings, and other properties, and even human lives. Also, the gases released in volcanic eruptions are toxic, which may cause respiratory problems. One of the most worst volcanic eruptions in the Philippines happened in June 15, 1991. It was the eruption of the Mount Pinatubo found on the borders of the provinces of Zambales, Pampanga, and Tarlac. It lasted for nine hours and killed about 800 people and left more than 100,000 people homeless. Volcanic eruptions may be predicted. Before an actual eruption, a volcano may show signs of activities like releasing gases and steam that would indicate that an eruption may happen. Volcanic eruptions bring great amount of sediments to the surface. They could lead the formation of mountains, islands, and they could rapidly and drastically change the Earth's surface in just one eruption. Tsunami a tsunami is a series of water waves caused by the displacement of a large volume of water from a specific area in the sea. 
If these waves approach the shore, it can cause great damage on the coastal region, homes, infrastructure, and ecosystem. It could kill human lives. It destroys everything in its path and could carry with debris like cars, homes, including people, into the ocean. Tsunamis could cross an entire ocean without losing energy. Tsunamis from the same region could hit countries that are far apart from each other. They may be caused by earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and landslides. These sudden movements of the earth crust may be the cause of water being displaced from where they are. Just in the past decade, the world experienced two of the most devastating tsunamis ever recorded. On December 26, 2004, a tsunami was formed in the Indian Ocean and hit Indonesia and the other coastal areas around it. The tsunami killed around 200,000 people and destroyed their homes and properties. On March 11, 2011, Japan experienced an earthquake estimated to have a magnitude of 8.9, which was followed by a devastating tsunami. The waves reached at the height of 39 meters. In addition to this, it also damaged the cooling systems of nuclear power plant in Japan, the Fukushima nuclear power plant creating worldwide scare of a possible nuclear meltdown and spread of radioactive materials. The damage costing $300 billion was said to be the most expensive in the history. Tsunami warning systems are now available. They detect the possible occurrence of tsunami and earthquakes and can warn people in the coastal region of evacuation procedure. As we develop and become more industrialized, we use more and more of the land of the earth. We clear the forest, flatten the mountains and hills, bore holes in the lands and build structures on it. Natural forces and disasters all contribute to shaping the earth's crust. But man contributes just as much to changing the earth, often to tragic results.